This is Jeremiah. We're back with a final segment of the Book of Revelation. And we have quite a few projects here. I might share those projects with you in a moment as we do everything in one name and one name only. Okay. And that's what we're going to do. And... We're rejoicing in the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we bless the Lord, O our soul, and all that is within us. We bless His holy name. I'm showing you one. I'm showing you one of my favorite. Uh, I'm showing you one of my favorite uh, paintings from Monet. I think it's an absolutely wonderful painting and a definite masterpiece. As we get into a little bit of art every now and then, we, we, we get a little bit of art going on. This is a, this is a part-time art class, as many of you know. We don't get into a lot of technical aspects. A lot of people like technical aspects of art, but I, I, I rarely mention anything technical. Uh, I was more of an uh, art philosopher in college, more than an art uh, studio artist. Jeremiah, let's get going as we enjoy. I love you, Jesus. And you can turn to Revelation 22. We're going to finish the book. We love Jesus and we do everything uh, thinking about loving Jesus all the time. Now, this lady here is apparently reading a Bible. And, uh, and this is where it's at. You young people out there, especially you young ladies, this should be the way you roll, as they say here in America. This is the way you should look, basically, and roll and, and be a classy Bible student. As they say in, in, in the hood here a couple, a couple of years ago, represent. You're representing. Let's go, Jeremiah. Let's go. Have a good testimony. That's, that's what's going on here. Now, we have... Uh, Revelation chapter 22, Revelation chapter 22, our ear is open to the, the rapture horn of Jesus Christ, and we just looked at Jesus Christ talking uh, in, in horn fashion with John, right? And that's what we do here, we, we, we want to talk in, 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 in Jesus fashion. We want, to, we want to talk in, in, uh, in like a horn, you know. We, we, we want to make announcements. Man shall not live by bread alone. Most humans live by food, shelter, and very simple animal instincts. But that's how you die. That's how you die. You die by living as an animal. You die living on your own, uh, your own, uh, what's the word looking for? Your own survival, your, your own intake, your own input, your output, your gatherings, your paychecks, your, you, you people die this way. This is absolutely, uh, this is one of my top favorite paintings of all time, without a doubt. We, we, we have two women going on in the United States right now. They're very classy women, reading their Bible, and then there are women like the women up north here a, a couple, couple of days ago. Very evil women, who obviously have some sort of satanic worship or... Uh, you know, these are some very wicked people that are being on this computer right now, and we're not going to, we're not, we're not focusing on them, we're just mentioning it because uh, recently they've been hanging around here. They even brought that mass murderer to Philadelphia here the other day.
the Ukrainian delegacy or dele delegates or representatives or whatever. It's just horrible. They're shoving mass murderers in our face and basically Satan worshippers and, and women who are not classy women and they're shoving them every time I turn the computer on and I've never seen these, I've never seen a lot of filthy people before on, on, on the screen that much. I, I'm not used to it and uh, when I was young all we had was Lassie who was a dog who, who helped save the boy and, and warn the parents of, of some impending doom and peril. And, and we had ice cream, we, we went to bed. That was it. There weren't hundreds of people worshiping Satan on the Grammy Awards or all, all of this stuff didn't exist. There weren't any horror movies that show people screaming and, and ripping each other apart and laughing or something with clowns and none of this existed. And, and, and I'll never get used to it. And, and every now and then I'll mention it because I, I can't help but mention it. We love you, Jesus. We've been mentioning it a lot here recently because it's kind of surrounding us. It's getting worse. You know, I'm, I'm not a boiling frog. I can see when things are getting worse. And it's time to jump out of the water. I mean, not too far from here, they, they just put 20,000 Haitians into a community that can't afford to take care of them. And they're crashing cars and they're eating cats and... And, 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 and they're, they're, uh, they're attacking people. A girl was attacked with a machete here, uh, not too far from here, from one of these people, from Haiti, whatever. It, it, so, for, so for me, I, I can't sit up here and go, hey, everything is cool, you know, no. Every now and then, we have to mention what's around us here. I, I don't have a biblical ostrich perspective. I don't have one. The guy who's responsible for probably 500,000 dead people, or maybe four to 300,000, with another 100,000 uh, injured children in hospitals, and he's, he basically is responsible for it. And he's walking around here like he's a normal guy, and, and, and Trump is shaking his hand or something. You know, and you're, you're surrounded, people. I don't know if you know it, but you're Custer's last stand. That's, this is Custer's last stand. You got single shot rifles, and they and they've got repeater rifles. That was Custer's problem. I think those guns came from England. I don't. I forgot where they came from, but it's, I think they somehow got to uh, Sitting Bull. And Custer, he, Custer was uh, devoted to uh, uh, saving the lives of people who were who were going out west. That was his job. Which I, I think is a noble, a noble situation. I mean, the, the, people, the people came out rapidly in, into territory that wasn't theirs, uh, uh, on the most part. But that's not the point. There's still people. People who trespass, we don't want to, we, we don't want to see them murder, do you? I don't think so. So in, in that respect, so, uh, Custer was a hero. If somebody comes into my yard and, 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 and they pitch a tent, you know, and, and they destroy a plant or, or kill my, my, my cow, I, I, I'm not going to kill them. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm not geared that way, you know. I want, I'll, I'll ask them to get off my property, but I'm not going to kill them. Okay, so, I mean, uh, okay, so let's get going as we continue to... I don't know what happened. I, th I thought I had this on repeat here. Hold on. And I'm thinking out loud. Pardon me. Okay, let's get back to when well, we're getting into I love you, Jesus. Let's have some more love you, Jesus, going. Well, we, we, we clicked hold me. Let's go with that. Many of you out there, you need to start focusing on heavy hitters. And let's talk about that before we get into Revelation 22. As we do everything in one name, you know that, in one name only. And we're open, our ears are open to the trumpet of the rapture. And you've eaten your living bread, and at any moment you can shoot straight up. What and if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? You'll never see death. You have rocket fuel out of there. 
absent from the body, is present with the Lord. Let's get going as we rejoice in all of these wonderful scriptures, and we anticipate being with Jesus Christ, uh, and we talk about it like all day. And we pray in the name of Jesus, and we do all of this in the name of the Father and the Son, and in their ghost, and in their presence, Emmanuel. Are you ready to go? Uh, we have 22 ready. I wanted to talk about a few items first. Um, hold me in your arms. The, the, what, what I wanted to say was, let me get back to my original thought here. Because I, I have like three or four items here. I, I apologize, I got a little lost here. The main item to start this ministry is, is to focus on loving Jesus in real time. Like right now, you know, you're, you're, you're going to sit back and you're going to take a deep breath and inhale and you're going to exhale and you're going to get ready for the Word of God and something from the Lord is coming to you. A slice of living bread. And that slice is generally uh, uh, surrounded uh, with the concepts that the Master speaks. I don't know how many people I've run into have been Christians for a while, and it's very sad to hear them ignore the terminology of the Master. I'll say it again. It's, it's, it's a very sad situation when, when you see people who walk through the church and they don't know the prime directive. They, they don't know the primary terms. See, Christianity has terms that are germane to you becoming a mature Christian, oida in the Greek, is for you really to get a, a good knowledge of putting on everything that is in Jesus Christ from the book of Philemon. And in order to do that, you need to know terminology. That's why I go over this New Covenant playlist with you, which is basically a glossary or a dictionary. Because as a, as a Bible teacher and a teacher of general ed, I, I'm a pretty good assessor as to where people are having a problem learning. And one of the main things that people are having a problem as far as learning and not just walking through the church, is terminology. You need to know the terminology of the commandments of Jesus Christ. That's why that's one of the main reasons why this New Covenant playlist is up here. It's basically a glossary, so you can start talking and knowing what you're talking about. It doesn't do any good to talk and not know what you're talking about. What good is it? If you don't know the terms, you're just reading We're not here to make anybody learn everything in one day. That's not the point. It's just an accelerated growth is what we're doing here. That's, all, that's what's happening here. The peripheral issues are being left alone here, but pretty much. So that, so that everyone who comes to this ministry, you get a quick, snap, crackle, accelerated class where you, you get a bachelor's degree in Christianity in two years if you, if you watch my videos. Now, now, most of the people who come here, they disappear because they have sports, they have other things they're doing, and that's not necessarily evil. I'm just saying that that's on them, right? That some people are going to come here, and they're going to get a bachelor's degree in, in Bible study, and it's, it's only, only going to take them a year or two, and, and snap, crackle, pop. They, they know most of the terminology in, in your Bible that's important and germane to the commandments of Jesus Christ, and that's what we're here for. Then everything else becomes icing on the cake. If you're hungry, a hot dog tastes good. You don't need mustard. Let's talk about loving Jesus as we get ready for a couple of items here. Hold me. I can look at this painting for forever, basically. It's just an absolutely beautiful painting. Uh, th this guy, he has a, he has something with light. Um, all, most artists who are professionals and so forth, they see light from a different angle. They use light differently. This guy used light better than anybody I think I've ever seen as a painter, in my opinion, of course. I, I see light and I see an ability to see things from a very, very wonderful perspective. Um, uh, we're not worshiping the guy, we're just observing his skills. Jeremiah, are you ready to go? 
Yeah, I wanted to mention loving Jesus right now as we just sit back and we just love Jesus for a while and take it easy and get ready for some scriptures and uh, and just so since, since hold me came up, we'll stick with that. I have a lot of good paintings in here. I rate him very high. I put some Adon. Uh, I think I had a Malay or two in here. Some of these famous painters who I really like a lot. I really like their paintings. And what's nice about a lot of these guys, uh, like Millet or Adon, you can tell they're very caring people. You know, they, they everything is gentle, everything is kind, and that's what we promote here. We have nothing to do with violence. I, I was watching the computer here, and they and they had uh, men in cages kicking each other, blood everywhere. This is the opposite of what we do here. That's the antithesis of what we preach here. We don't want any violence. I, I used to like Kung Fu a lot, and I, I was uh, uh, skimming the pages here of the web a little uh, recently, surfing, and I, and I noticed that some of these Kung Fu movies I used to watch, off and on, some of these Kung Fu people, I really, I really appreciated their athleticism and gymnastics, and, and that's what we really enjoy. We, we, we really don't enjoy people hurting each other. That's, no. You know, watching the human body act like a rubber band and so forth, and, and do marvelous things, and, and uh, stretching the limits of physicality or something, that's basically what we enjoyed. We, 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 we watched the violence, but we, we, we really didn't need that. And when the bad guy gets it, we have a tendency to like that, and sometimes we like it too much, so uh, we have to be careful with that. You know, We're here to save people, not to condemn them and crush them. Jeremiah, are you on fire? Listen, I want to mention loving Jesus right now. We have a little time of prayer, and uh, it's a Saturday for me. I'm, I'm a little tired today. I've been working some pretty long hours here. A lot of things going on here. We, we had a fight with wasps here the other day. Is it hornets or wasps? I think they're wasps, but boy, they were causing a problem here. And it took a lot of stress and work, and so let's get going as we I'm going to take a little bit easy Saturday. I, I, I'm going to share with you what's on the plate here for the for the, the, the month of October coming any day now, okay? You'll never, never worry. Just say, hold me, Jesus. Tight in your arms, my Lord. Very simple jazz fusion-y kind of song here. Uh, I have some more advanced Johann Bach, Miles Davis-y kind of things over there. But uh, I'm not ready for that. I think, I, I think I'm going to get a new computer and chuck the one I have. And uh, you can get started on some new stuff here. But let's relax and think about loving Jesus and you yourself holding Jesus Christ. And sitting there and relaxing in the presence of the Lord uh, ahead of time. You know, you, you, you see yourself sitting there and you're comfortable. You belong there. You belong there because God was merciful to you. He did not reward you according to your transgressions. Uh, Psalm 103, 104, bless the Lord. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. And I'm going to bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, I, I, you know, the four ounces in me, which is a ghost, you, you are a ghost. When people die, the ghost leaves the body. It's like driving an automobile. When you, when you get out of the automobile, the automobile doesn't function anymore. And depending upon what you do with Jesus Christ determines whether you go up or down. Hold me tight in your arms, my Lord. That's our goal here. To sit around Jesus Christ and relax. Look at beauty like this beautiful lady here and, and, 
who's dressed properly, and everything is copacetic. Nature's, nature's in order, everything's beautiful, and this is life uh, abundantly. More abundantly. I came that you might have life, and that more abundantly. Let me see your Father's glory, and I'll never, ever worry. Hold me. Now, let, let, let's have a quick review over what's going on in this ministry. As we, we, chapter 22 is easy. It's very short. There's only a few items, and I'm going to read it and wrap it up. I'm going to close the book on Revelation, the book of Revelation, probably for about two years at least. I'll come back here if the Lord doesn't come back. And uh, and so on. We're going to uh, let this book go. I will refer, obviously, to lots of scriptures in here. And, and let's and let's segue into that. the The idea here is we're headed towards a wonderful place in this ministry, and I'm very excited about it. And let me share it with you, and some of you may see, we, we, we repeat this quite a bit and so forth, but that's what excitement does. It, you, know, you know, it's very exciting right now. It's very exciting what's going on now. Because we're wrapping up the basic Bible studies, and we're getting into specific Bible scriptures, and it's going to be easier on all of us because... The book of Revelation is, is, is very cognitive. You know, it, 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 it's a lot, lot of cerebral sweat here. And, and uh, it, it, it takes some concentration. And pretty soon, we're basically done with a lot of concentration. And I'm very happy with that. This ministry is going to be like an apostolic ministry as it winds down. A lot of spontaneity, very simple concepts. Get excited and go home and go to bed. That's what's going to happen here. Hold me. Hold me. It's all about relaxing and learning to be with Jesus Christ here and being relaxed and seeing yourself seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And that's going to help a lot of you out. It's germane to... Uh, growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. As Paul told Philemon, putting everything on that's good for your sound doctrine. The helmet of salvation, the hope of getting out of here, the breastplate of righteousness, purity, the shield of faith. You're very confident in the things you need to be confident in. You need to be confident that it's good to do the right thing. You can't lose that confidence because that's what your grandparents gave you. Your grandparents gave you, uh, by their own progeny, they gave you the prevarication of reality. And you're going to have to fix that. They gave you a twisted view when you were born uh, of your desires and, and then the world and you turn the TV on or whatever and, and that gave you more twisted perspectives. And then you come to Jesus Christ and he says, we need to purge and burn all of that out and let's get going. Let me see your Father's glory and I'll never ever worry. Hold me. Love believes all things. Love never fails. It, it, it never doubts reality. That's the point I'm making. This is a big point about the Bible. I, I, let, let's stop there for a minute. As we get ready for a couple of items here. This is the last video. And uh, rep, chap, chapter 22 is pretty easy. When you, when you start putting your confidence in science... That's when you see Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he's telling you that he is the direction to, that you need to take and that he is science. And, and, and when you accept science, you're going to find Jesus Christ. 
When you meet people who, who don't agree with science, you're meeting people who are going downstairs. And one of the scientific facts that, that, that the Bible repeats over and over again is that the Holy Spirit comes to human beings and, and it tells them that you're a sinner. That's the, the conviction of sin. It tells you that scientifically you are a sinner and you, you've, hurt, you've hurt people, you've lied, you've cheated, and you're guilty. If you don't agree with that science, the devil has, has taken control over your mind and your heart and you're not opening yourself up to accepting that science. Obviously, we're using the science science as a broad term, but it basically means to acknowledge. That's what science means. Acknowledge means to know. Past tense. I can't tell a dog, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we had a lot of dogs growing up. I remember all their names, but I, I can't tell them about God and sin so they can be saved because they don't have a soul. They can't own a close relationship with Father God as Adam did in the cool of the evening in the Garden of Eden. They can't do that. Let me see your father's glory, and I'll never ever worry. Jesus is about holding and loving and caring, and that's what that's what we foster here. Kindness, as Paul said, that's what we put on here, and we'll have it no other way. Putting confidence in being a kind person is what we cultivate here. And if you have a problem with that, you, you, you're not going to eat the living bread. That's what living bread is. It, it, it's, it's faith in love. It's being confident that, that I should open myself up, as John says so wonderfully, open your bowels of compassion. You need to open up your ability. That's what it means. It's, it, it, John gives a wonderful definition of the word aptomy. I think that's how it's pronounced. My Greek friends, uh, uh, I know a little Greek, but I don't necessarily know uh, how to pronounce it properly. I guess I'm not to go to Greece. It's a beautiful place. I have a lot of pictures of Greece in, in high definition here as part of this ministry. Uh, as we enjoy the world. It's our world. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Greece is my home. Everything is my home. Tight in your arms, my Lord. We have the lesson here, faith, under, under number five here. You, you can go to that playlist, and I'll, I'll teach you the, the components of faith. One, I'm going over one of the main components right now, which is which is human beings, uh, when they're born and they live in Babylon, which, which, is, which is predominantly America, or the whole world, uh, nothing but lies are everywhere. And we have that John chapter 5 wonderful scripture where the master says, The Father loveth me, and he teaches me everything that he does. You want, you want intelligence and esoteric knowledge and high intel? Then you, you need to come to Jesus Christ and, and start loving him. Then all of a sudden you'll find yourself uh, hyper-intellectual. That's what happens. I, I can't I can't tell the world and Babylon that I'm intelligent because they can't receive the information. The, the, the devil of this world has blinded the eyes of the wicked and they can't see intellectualism. That's some of these people over here at, the, at this convention up here a couple of days ago in Chicago, very close to this region here. The Ohio Valley, uh, west of the Ohio Valley here, and the, the, the people were there, they, they had half of their hair shaved off, the, the, one half was purple, one was orange, they pierced themselves. You're not supposed to pierce your body. That's mental illness. And they have tattoos all over their body and, and braided hair or something. The Bible says don't do any of these things. And you walk up to them and say, here, I'm going to cast my pearls before swine. You, you can't tell people who are devoted to evil to take in truth. They're, they're going to laugh at you. Hey, why don't you be a kind person and a caring person and care about babies? 
They go, ah, who is this fool? Where's Goliath? That's that's who we want to come around town here. We we you know we're Philistines. We don't trust in God to give us provide us things. We don't know God. We go take what we want. We murder. We steal. We lie. We cheat. And we we cut our hair off. We pierce our bodies. Uh, and we we're basically wicked. We're not going to go up there and preach the blood of these people because they're reprobate. They're done. They're not open as the word we just talked about, aptomy, from John. They're not going to open up their heart to become caring caring people for children and infant and infants and so forth. They laugh about infanticide and stuff. They smile, they have ice cream, they look at you, and they take showers, some of them. Some of them look really freaky, and some of them try to look like they're Republicans or something. They actually take showers and and cut their hair properly and talk properly. There's all different kinds of devils. Well, I'm not going to take take my time out to go to people who don't want to listen and open up their heart to be caring people and to the truth and reality and science. All, all they want to do is, is, is embrace science fiction. Lies about, about how the truth is this and all of the prevarications. Tight in your arms, my Lord. Christianity is essentially on many levels an opportunity to take in these terms I just talked about earlier, which is sub submit and, 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 uh, and humiliation and denial and put on a servant mind and sacrifice and acknowledging science and truth and confessing science and truth, acknowledging a, a, a truth again and then acknowledging truth again. That's what Paul means in Romans 1 when he says faith uh, faith and then faith again. Going from faith to faith to faith to faith to faith to faith. You, 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 keep, you keep reigniting your devotion to truth. You, most humans who, who come to Jesus Christ, they're drenched in a thousand lies. So, so, so what you have to do is we have to go through this whole training process of reality. That's what we have to do. They come into church and they go, I believe that murder is okay. I, I, I believe that stealing is okay. I believe that adultery is okay. I believe that lying is okay. I believe that cheating is okay. I believe that, that you, you can cut, curse your parents out. or I believe all these things. And here I, I walk in the church. So now you have to reevaluate. And you, you, we need a whole new ball game here. Well, oh, 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 you keep telling, I, I need confidence that fornication is bad. Okay, I gave in to fornication, so I went back to church, and I said, Lord, I need confidence that fornication is bad. I, I need confidence that drinking alcohol is basically bad. I, I, oh, I, 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 I lost confidence that it's worth it to be kind to my neighbor, so I come back to church, I repent, and I need to start all over again, because I lost confidence that being a loving person was what I wanted to do. I lost confidence that being pure was the way to go. When I gave in to some, 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 some evil or sin that God hates, and I, I get on my knees and I go, well, here we are again. Who is the one who forgives my soul? You do. I have a song about that. You know, that's basic Christianity. So I need to put confidence again that allowing trash in my brain and my body, whatever, i got to go through this all again, and it goes over and over again in, in all the aspects of sin in Babylon so we can clean Babylon out of view. That's basically what, basically what faith is. And, and, and faith is also tied into the fear of the Lord. It's all tied in together. I'm not, I'm not going to get too complicated, but here's the point. You need to be confident in, in the fear of the Lord, that, that, that God is in charge, and you ain't. And then when he says something, you might want to listen. That, that, that's a lot of what Christian faith is. It's not just believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's also having faith in the fact that he's boss, and he don't play, as my buddy used to say. We just looked at Psalm number two, and, and, and the psalmist said, uh, uh, 
Praise the Lord in fear. We, we praise Jesus Christ in, in, in the fear of the Lord. Let's talk about a few items here. Let's change the subject. We're going to get ready for 22. I'm very happy. Let me, let me give you a progress report here as we get ready for 22 because some of, some of you are following along here and and uh, it's nice to give a progress report just for a couple of minutes here, okay? Tight in your arms, my Lord. We, we, we can't get enough of that hold me stuff. The, the, the Christianity is based upon you learning how to enjoy the love of Jesus Christ and, 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 and to speak on that love because that is your gift. A home, a hot dog, and a car, that's not your gift. A, a TV bozo might tell you that because they don't love God, love these people. They, they, they think that God is some sort of a toy maker. And every day is like uh, Christ Mass. And some of you have noticed that I have a little bit of an anger towards this situation because I've had 50 years of these people and I'm really tired of them. I mean, 50 years is long. To see people come on TV and say that Jesus Christ told them to be greedy and count hundreds of thousands of dollars or something. And brag about what kind of clothes they were, like, like some kind of a woman. That's why, that's why these guys turn into homosexuals and stuff. Because always think about yourself. That's what homosexual means. It's just you. You in the mirror. You hoard money. You don't love your neighbor. You haven't liquidated your cash to, to bless other people. The word is charity, which is another word for agape. Agape is a pretty decent word. It, 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 gets, it gets a little deep. Jeremiah, are we done? No. I want to talk about Psalms for a moment. Psalms has, uh, we're, we're, we're at 25 now. Now, Psalm 25 is probably the most complicated, and that's why I'm going to stop here. That's um, 25 out of 150 Psalms. Now, as we move on into the, in the book of Psalms, we're going to have an easier time as we move on, because we're going to be repeating concepts. Uh, I probably won't give you every definition of loving kindness, show me thy marvelous loving kindness, and so forth. There are different applications for loving kindness. Show me, keep me as the apple of mine eye. And we're, we're going to focus on that a little, but we're not going to go through every quotation from the book. But we will touch most of the concepts, okay? That, that's what this ministry does. We like to talk on, on basic subjects, but we don't, we don't put every context of the subject. That would take too much time. I, I don't want a million videos here. We, we, want, to, we want to touch the main arteries and, and leave all of the capillaries basically alone, Okay? And that's what I've done here in, in, in uh, Psalm 1 through 25. I'm very happy with it. It's very comprehensive. Obviously, we're not going to touch everything that is paratext of the commandments of Jesus Christ. Remember, this ministry focuses on slices and gulps, which is letter I in this ministry. And that is, the those are the commandments of Jesus Christ. Everything always comes back to that. I don't care what you say. I don't care what university you went to, a seminary, whatever. Everything comes back to the red letters of the commandments of Jesus Christ. Always. And that's why people are lost right now, because they've gotten away from it. I think the pilgrims and even William Penn got away from the red letter commandments a little. I think that was, that was a big problem. And I think that's why a lot of Americans continued that, that heritage, and it's not good. It doesn't mean that William Penn's not saved or the pilgrims. That's not the point. The problem is, just in my opinion, there wasn't enough emphasis on Jesus talking to John's mother. When Jesus talked to John's mother, he, he gave bottom line information when he talked to him, her, and, and her two boys. I don't hear that when I listen to the radio. I, I, I used to listen to the Bible's teachings in, in Los Angeles, KKLA, Los Angeles radio, uh, 
FM. We have Bible study on from 6 in the morning till like 12 at night. You want me to tell you how many times I heard a pastor or a Bible teacher talk about uh, Jesus talking to John's mother? It's right there. I don't know how you can miss it. Let me tell you how many times I heard it. Year after year after year, hour after hour after hour, with Bible teachers, Bible teachers, Bible teachers. Let me tell me. Let me tell you how many times I heard that. None. It's not what you say; it's what you don't say. Okay. You didn't say uh, John's mother asking her boys. What kind of position are they going to have in heaven? I'm obviously concerned about our boys, right? Because they're not doing very well prosperous-wise at all. Uh, humans, humans just naturally want some results of their energy. And, and, that's, and that's a reasonable request. And the master basically tells her that this is basically a denial situation of poverty. And that's, that's what it is. It's a posthumous return, uh, Matthew 6 and elsewhere. It's a posthumous return. Uh, you get your return when you're dead. Or in the rapture. I'm going to skip my, my review on Psalm 1 through 25. I also had a little point I wanted to make about uh, an item here of, of some note. Uh, and that would be... I wanted to talk about what's coming up with the letter L here and how important that is. And, and uh, I don't know if I want to do that right now. I'll just mention it in passing. The letter L here is becoming the big enchilada here. In other words, this is getting exciting. And the reason why this ministry is getting so exciting is because we're getting to the creme de la creme here. We're, we're getting to the point where we are getting to the big, heavy love scriptures now. You know, it's, it's, like, going to, it's like going to grad night, you know, at Disneyland. We, I didn't live too far from Disneyland. I, I didn't go to grad night. Uh, it, would, it would have been kind of boring for me because I already, I already know uh, every inch of the place. I used to go in free when I was young. So I know, I, you know... I know, I know every square inch of that place. I know, I, I, I used to work at Knott's Berry Farm, and I met Mr. Knott. He, he, told, he told me to cut my hair. I had, I had a ponytail at the time. I think I was 18. But uh, it's graduation time here. We, we, we start going over a lot of the heavy hitters, you know, the, the scriptures. Let me, let me give an example. We're, we're, we're going to start going through a lot of scriptures here. And they'll, they'll be available here for you. And I will probably put them alphabetically uh, or categorize them. I haven't decided. But this is one of the final things I'm doing in this ministry. And it's very exciting because we're getting into the big heavy hitters. And, and, and the blessing that come from, from having a heavy hitter format for this particular uh, segment that's available for you under the letter L. I'm going to repeat heavy, heavy duty scriptures, and they're going to, it's just going to be a big blessing. I think it's going to be monstrous. I've never seen anybody do this before, and I, you know, and I'm very happy to do this. Where you just hear scriptures that are, that are the prime directives over and over again. Uh, you know, as time as, as time permits. This is a very nice painting here. This is Ed's Ed. Uh, I forgot his last name. Ed. Talk about it. Anyway, it's Ed. And I've always liked this painting. But we're, we're getting into For God So Loved the World, and uh, they will know that I have loved you, and, and, 
as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I'm going to give you a lot of heavy, monstrous scriptures here. And I'll probably categorize them or, or do them alphabetically. And I'm very, I'm very happy to announce that. Okay? And of course, we're getting very close to not having any more long videos anymore. They're going to be probably 10 to 15 minutes. And I'm going to shut them down. Because we're going into an apostolic mode. And I won't mention that again. Uh, uh, we'll go into that right now. But it's very exciting to get very precise now and have a good foundation with with the with the, with, the, with the dictionary here. And and uh, it's, it's exciting because we're basically done with a lot of basics. And we can relax and rejoice in a lot of love music and a lot of uh, specifics and focus on heavy hitters now, you know, and, and repeat them uh, periodically, and not every day, but just repeating the heavy hitters a lot. God is not willing that any should perish. These are the scriptures we're going to focus on here under letter L, and I'm very excited about it. I, I'm, I'm like a quarter horse race uh, getting ready for a 350-yard race. And I, and I want I, I want to cross that wire at, at, at 17 seconds. I want to run a fast race. I'm ready to go, and and it's exciting to hear these wonderful top of the line scriptures. Once again, this is going to be available. And we're here for Bible study in general, and that's what's exciting right now. Is that basically I've covered. And I'm, I'm getting to the point where we're covering a lot of heavy hitters in your, in your Bible pertaining to sound doctrine and pertaining to, to uh, uh, everything about salvation, uh, all of the living bread, you know, every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God and all of this. And we're, we're, we, the foundation is beautiful. And I'll have some some cleanup, but we're basically done already. And everything everything now is going to be like an apostolic thing, and my dad would like this, my earth father. I have two fathers, and my, my earth father would like this. And I know my heavenly father's going to like this for sure. But my, and my dad, he, he, liked, he liked apostolic short ministries of short messages of emotion and shut down. And that's the way Brother Robert liked it, my fellow... Evangelist in Huntington Beach, California. No, that was a Redondo Beach. What a beautiful place. Redondo Beach is kind of like France or something on the on the Riviera or something. It's just amazing. California has some of the most beautiful places you could ever see. It's too expensive there. There's crime and there's uh, you know uh, immigration problems and traffic. So it, it's not what you might think it is. You might be better off here in Indiana with blizzards or something and ice and whatever but here's the point the point is is that uh, we're here at a very exciting time right now and uh, the transition has got me uh, i'm very happy about it to, to, to transition now into uh, a somewhat relaxed position here of uh, uh well, let's let, let's let's let that go uh because and i also have uh, let, let's change that subject I also have a lesson here on where do evil women go? And, and, and I, I had a lesson prepared for marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and there are laws on that. I'm not talking about Ronald Reagan's California laws. Let me remind you of something. When you see a law in the United States of America, or a law like the, 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 the Muslims have laws and whatever, all laws are under Christ's laws. And when those laws don't line up with Christ and his laws, they don't mean anything. I think Reagan put no-fault divorce in California. Well, it's not what the Bible teaches. Even people that weren't Christians, if you went to Lake Tahoe to get a divorce, and so forth in California, which is, I think, think think was known as the, the divorce capital of the United States. Um, even the taxi drivers and people, uh, they they, they kind of got on your case because you were a quitter, and, and they understood that. 
that people who got in, Amer got in marriage situations, you're basically a quitter. And what I mean by that is, I'm not saying that people have a, a, a cause for divorce. My point is, is that even people who aren't even Christians see people as quitters. When they quit, quit a commitment, that's the point. Made a commitment, and, and he, he went out of it in five seconds flat because the, the, the food wasn't cooked properly, which is what the people told uh, Jesus Christ about Moses. I'm not going to go into that right now, but I do have a lesson planned for marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and I'm going and I'm going to add that to where do women go, where do evil women go? Because it's time to spend a little bit of time talking about how women are not innocent uh, people. Uh, America has a tendency to say women are innocent a lot. That's why we don't have capital punishment for women. But we but, but we'll we'll put capital punishment on a man so fast he's dead before he hits the ground. There's only been a couple of capital punishment of women, and there, there's been a lot of evil women in this country who deserve capital punishment. I want to talk about that. Obviously, we're not picking on women because we know science. We're Christians. Look at the book of Galatians. There is neither male nor female in Christ Jesus. That's all in your mind. The Muslims say that women are less than men, and you can marry four of them and swap them like they're cattle. That's chapter 4 of that horrible book. Interesting how a lot of the Democrat women say that the, that the Muslims are better than we are, we Christians, and so forth. That, that's the devil. We're nothing like most of the world, we American men. What an asinine group of people on TV, on the so-called The Viewpoint on TV. They have The Viewpoint with women sitting there. Uh, all sloppily looking, whatever. This is the new world. Let's, let's get back to the book of Revelation. I just want to point out that we have a lot a lot of exciting things going on. This is kind of a Saturday for me. I'm kind of relaxed. And and, uh, and uh, let's go to chapter, chapter 22. No, I want to make a new video. I'm going to stop this video. I'll be right back. I'm going to put this down under, under, under another category. Okay. Still hold me tight in your arms, my Lord. Let me make one note about romance here in these romance videos I have here. Uh, that's under the letter F in this ministry. We have 300 or 400,000 views, people who have come to my channel. Uh, almost a half a million people have come to my channel. A half a million people. Most of them just browse my lessons, and they and they disappear. People's hearts are cold, as Jesus said. So they see him on the cross, and 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 they're not pierced in the heart over what they did to him because I'm the one that put him on the cross, and and, and pierced my heart. As it, as we're going to get to Peter, who told the people that you need to see that you're the one that put him on the cross. And then the people said, what do we do? They were pierced in the heart. My job is to pierce hearts here. My job is to do exactly what Peter did. Get these people to confess that they're the ones that put him on the cross. And what do we do about all of this? Because I feel bad about what I've done. That's what we teach here. That everybody's a sinner, and they're the ones that put Jesus on the cross, uh, and you need to love him and give thanks for him for taking your errors so readily. Okay? I'm going to cut that idea short, okay? Because I want to get back to... I'm going to read 22. 22 is really easy. That, that's it for me for the day. I usually stop about 6 o'clock, but I, I want to go ahead and do uh, tw uh, uh, finish 22 right now. I want the book done for tomorrow. Tomorrow going to be smooth, and we start really branching out a little bit. We have about five items here. I've mentioned it's very exciting right now, especially the letter L right now. Because we're going through a lot of these very, very beautiful scriptures, and I can't stop talking about it. 
It is absolutely the cat's pajamas, as they say in America. <laughs> it, 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 it is, it, it, we're excited that this is really smoking here. When you start getting into all of these, for God so loved the world, he that loveth not, knoweth not the first thing about God, beloved, let us love one another. Um, and these three abide, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love, and, and love never fails. Love endures all things, believes all things, has confidence all the time. The Lord is my shepherd. I have no desire. I have no want. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Psalm 23. We're, we're going to repeat that here every, every two weeks or so. It's absolutely monstrous. Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is like getting a, a bite of uh, ice cream and cake. And, it, and you're sitting in front of your mother or something. It, 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 there's nothing better. That's it. You reach the top of the mountain and you're, knowing, you're going no further. For a human being to say, I have no want, is absolutely beautiful. Because what most people, most people talk about is what they want. Because they have wants. They have lusts, they have wants. And for you to say, I don't have any, is monstrous. I'm not a big fan of, of Mark Twain, but I might watch that movie tonight, The Prince and the Pauper, where, the, where Psalm 23 is quoted a little bit by the boy there who's being murdered. And he's getting ready to be murdered by one of his own soldiers, and he starts to pray the, the, Lord, the, the, the disciples' uh, uh, the Good Shepherd uh, uh, chapter there, 23. This is one of the most beautiful movies and, and screenplays ever written by, uh, in Hollywood. They got that one right. I, I don't like Mark, Mark Twain's books that much. I'm not saying they're bad. I just don't think they're all that good. And I don't know why he did such a good job on, on The Prince and the Pauper. I have no idea. It's not as though he didn't have skills in, 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 in Huckleberry Finn or whatever. But, but when he wrote The Prince and the Pauper, uh, he, 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 he stuck his foot in it, as they, as they say it's down south. You know, uh, What an excellent uh, uh, a bunch of verbiage in that movie, especially when the boy starts praying and stuff. This is God bless America. This is make America great again. More movies like, like The Prince and the Pauper here in the United States of America. Not these outer space movies. That, you know, it, it, that's why when you come to church, Jesus Christ has to start you all over again because you believe all these lies of outer space and, and the balls and the earth is a ball and round and there's gravity and there's atomic bombs and, and you just believe anything you hear and see on TV. I, I believe it. And then when Jesus talks, I don't believe it. Well, who are you going to serve? The truth or lies? you got to make a decision. Obviously, people in Hollywood, they like lies. And you get paid for believing in lies. Right? They break you off, as they say. They break you off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Jeremiah, let's come right back to this. i, I got to move, okay? Um, I, I'm, I'm getting a little emotional here, a little excited about all of these wonderful Bible lessons we have here. They're very exciting. This is intellectualism on steroids. The Bible student can step into any philosophy class in a university and basically take over the class. Because, because the knowledge you have exceeds anything that any of these people have, even in a psychology class. Not so much in a psychology class, because there's a lot of so-called science there, that, and, and, but a general philosophy class of any kind, because college is basically math and, and uh, 
math and grammar and music and everything else is philosophy. Everything. And that's open to a lot of error. That's my point. And you young students out there who are watching these videos, uh, I can equip you with enough, e enough equipment if you, if you did decide to go into that, what we call a hell hole of a university now, because, because the devil's basically taken over these universities, it's quite obvious, and the Lord let him do it. But here's my point. You, you can go there and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I, I can take over this class. Uh, don't try to make fun of me here. You know, hey, you know, uh, you know I, I did it on a couple of occasions. I basically told one professor that, you know what I can do? Because I'm a Christian and I'm not bragging, uh, I'm not a smart aleck. I'm just telling you that your class is unorganized. And because I have the mind of Christ, I can take this philosophy class, reorganize it, and make it ten times better than it is. So you, you, you try to talk about and make fun of me, you know, or something. Uh, okay, who, who should be made fun of here? You're the derision, not me. You're the joke. I could take all of your philosophers here and, and all of your ideas of Freud and Fromm and everybody and reorganize everything for you and make it intelligent, even though it's not intelligent. I can make it kind of intelligent. So, so don't make fun of me. You know, I don't feel bad about being, being put down in the class because, because, because I, I need to consider the source. That's the point. If you're surrounded by baboons, you shouldn't be mad. They're laughing at you. That's the point. They're baboons. I'll be right back. I have to finish 22 weeks. This, this is a very exciting day. It really is because we're really rejoicing in a lot of wonderful things here. I'm going to shut down and be right back.